a second to check out my Patreon page, guys. Your support is really appreciated. Enjoy the tutorial. Hey guys, and welcome back to the second Let's Code tutorial. Um, basically, we're doing the Star Blaster. Um, and I have put the link to the pictures that you can use from the first one onto the first video now um, and I might put onto the description of this one it depends if I remember or not because I'm pretty forgetful um, but basically what we're going to do in this episode is um, I'm going to bring you up to speed on what I've done now uh, and we're going to use the same app obviously from last time to continue what we're doing so all I've done on the main page um, since the other video was I've added the isolated storage settings um, so that we can store people's usernames I've um, added oh, um, I've added the um, app settings to check if the username <coughs> has already been entered before um, and if it has then it gets removed and re-added and also um, if it hasn't been added at all it will just add it straight in and then we will be navigated so first thing you want to do is create your new page so obviously we're going to right click on the solution and we're going to add new item and then we're going to add a portrait page which I've called game page now if you want to change the name then that's fine you can call it whatever you want but I mean if you're copying the like word for word then I suggest you stick with the same name at the end of the day no one sees the name it's just for your reference um, so once you've made that what we're going to do is we're just you're obviously you're going to want to sort out your um, main page so add this line of the isolated storage settings <coughs> then under your play button uh, you want to you inside your true statement for the acceptable name you're going to want to add the app settings that contains username to see if it does contain it, remove and re-add. And then if it doesn't contain it, it will just add it anyway. Uh, and then it will just, we'll use the simple navigation service to navigate to the page. Now that's all I've actually done on the, uh, the main page here. So we're going to go on over to the game page now. So here, what I've done is I've literally taken out all the, the usual stuff that I don't like. Um, I've added a background which is the same background as the main page so obviously you know you're just clicking on the grid and then you're going to properties appearance um, start again brush and then you're going to your image here and selecting the source as background um, once you've done that you're going to want to add a canvas so I've just dragged a canvas onto the page um, I haven't completely gone down the page I've left a bit of room here for the scoreboard um, so to speak so it's I mean it's up to you how much of the screen you cover the reason I only cover that far down um, is only because of that score but we're going to make the stars appear randomly inside the canvas so if you want a bigger playing area then do the whole page um, and put the text behind the canvas so that when people are clicking on the stars the text isn't getting in way of the tap um, so we'll worry about that though when we have the stars being produced um, and all I've done is I've added the canvas but what I've done is I've put the text block inside the canvas um, and I've put the hyperlink, there's like a hyperlink button over the whole canvas here, which I'm using to get the initial tap event. And I've put that over the top, like, of the text block, because before, when I was clicking on it, um, the text wasn't allowing me to tap on the button because the text was in the way. So I've put this hyperlink button, the exact, you know, I've put it actually full size on the app, um, so that you could tap anywhere to begin, really. Um, so that is going to be the one that actually starts where it says tap to begin that will initiate our timer and then other than that I've just literally added the score block which is the one down the bottom so at the moment that's all there is by way of you know code on the page um, now in here we've got a few things that I've chucked in that aren't being used necessarily like the score clearly isn't being used it's even moaning that it's not being used uh, but it will be so first things first is I've added the um, isolated storage again so that we can start referencing on this page. I've added um, a dispatcher timer so that we can actually do a countdown. And I've added a couple of uh, variables here. So I've got the boolean to start with or the bool, um, which I've got started equals false. So this is going to be for the tap event to decide whether or not the game is actually running. Um, then I've got a little integer here for the score um, because I would have used double but I can't see us having a score to a decimal point at the moment so we'll just leave it as a normal score. Um, then we've got a string for um, the user's name. Uh, that's quite unnecessary but I only do it because if you reference the name a lot throughout the app, uh, through the page, it's easy just to refer to them as user rather than writing this line out every time. Um, and then we've got one other integer which is going to be the countdown which is obviously the countdown. It's quite self-explanatory. 
Now, when the page first initializes, um, I'm changing the, um, the string of user to the application settings of username. Now, there's no need to have any sort of um, try and catch here or anything like that because we know that the username will exist because we've made sure on the page before that it can't actually go forward without containing a username and we know that this username box won't ever be blank because we're using an acceptable name checker first of all which is where we were checking if it's got you know letters and numbers or whatever um, and that it's of the right length so we know that it won't ever be null when it comes over unless something's gone catastrophically wrong that's very unlikely um, now what we've got is the dispatcher timer. We first of all set the interval. So I've set the interval to one second. You can set it to less, but then your countdown won't be normal. It would be abnormal. So that's the only reason it's at one. Um, and then the tick event um, is obviously set to dispatcher timer tick. And of course, here it is. So every time the um, timer ticks, which is every one second, we've got a little bit of code executing here. Now, it's not complicated, it's nice and simple, and basically, it's the countdown we've got at the top is set to three when the page starts. So, we're saying if the countdown is more than or equal to the number zero, then run this bit of code here. And what we'll actually be running is, first of all, it will say, right, has it got to zero yet? Because if it's got to zero, we want to tell them to go, you know, and start playing. But if it's not zero, then all it's going to do is it's going to change that status text block, which we had over the top here, and it's going to change that to be like three, two, one, go. Uh, so it's nice and simple. And then obviously each time it's ticking, it's just taking away one. So when you do like an integer, my integer here countdown, if I do minus minus and, and the little semicolon here, that is in turn actually just taking one away. And the same if you did plus plus, it would add one. So if the timer turns out to be, you know, not to be more than or equal to zero, uh, then we know it's time to start playing. So we just collapse the visibility of the status text uh, so that it's not in the way of the game. And we stop the timer because the timer is no longer needed. You know, it's, it's not no use of it anymore. Unless, of course, we were doing um, like a whack-a-mole kind of version of the game, which I was considering doing um, after. But for now, we're just going to do how many stars can you hit um, Actually, that's a good point. How many stars can you hit in a certain time? Maybe I'll change this up um, after this. I might have to mix around with the timer a little bit or maybe start a different timer. Because um, obviously we're going to want to time how many times they hit a star in a set length of time. Otherwise, they're just going to be tapping stars forever. So it's only just really occurred to me. So I'll make sure I do that in the next video. Um, and then obviously the, the button I was telling you about, I put a huge hyperlink button here, which covers the entire page. Um, and that's got if started is equal to false then start the timer so basically if you tap and then you tap again the first tap will initiate the timer um, which is actually going to start all of this kind of like time ticking here um, and then I should probably should have also added the started equals true at this point because the game is now running so once the start equals true and you tap it again um, it's not actually going to do anything uh, so I just put that else there just to kind of indicate that nothing's really going to happen. Um, if you would, you know, for the hell of it, want to mess around, you can put a little message in there to check that your code's working properly. Um, okay, so that's the code run through. I hope that wasn't too quick. Uh, so now I'll show you the results and I'll show you where we are. So obviously we try and play about a name. We need to enter our name. So I'm going to enter my name. Not that it really does much at the moment. The name got passed over, so we know the name has been passed correctly because the first thing the page does is put my name into a string. Had it failed, we'd have known by now. We'd have had a little horrible message because we've got no uh, you know, try and catch around that. Uh, and then it's just tap to begin. So I go ahead and tap, and here we go. Three, two, one, go. And it disappears. So we know that everything was working fine now. Um, we know that when I pressed on the tap, it counted down. It did all the minusing here. Eventually it got to zero, which, which point it then said go. And then obviously zero, you know, it took one away after the zero making minus one, which then doesn't um, count as a true for if the countdown is more than or equal to zero because it's less than. So I hope that was easy to understand. Um, I'll do it one more time just to kind of show you exactly how it works. So we just kind of open up the app, type in our name, press play, and we tap to begin. So that's the end of the uh, second Let's Code uh, video here, guys. Um, if it's getting confusing or if I'm not explaining things properly, then please let me know.
uh, your feedback. I do appreciate your feedback. So let me know if these videos are actually useful or if you're thinking, why is he wasting his time on these videos? Do something different. I'd like to know. Um, so as for usual, guys, don't forget to subscribe. Check me out on Twitter uh, and check out my Patreon page. So I'll see you in the next one, guys. Thank <laughs> you.